Hello, I'm Michael here, and today we are going to assemble the Messerschmitt BF110 from DuraFly. You're looking at the box right now. The parts have been laid out on this table here, and I have done some minor assembly ahead of time, so let me cover that first. The tail mechanism involves three parts, the vertical stabilizers, two of them with rudder, and the horizontal stabilizer with twin elevators. These were three pieces. Obviously, I have glued them together. I've also attached the control horns on the elevators and on the rudders. Now, the wing, I had to get started because there's a wooden wing spar, as you can see the center of it right here. But it was a bit delaminated out at the end, and I have still pictures of that. I laminated it, held it together with clamps while the glue dried. Then trial fitted it. It fit perfectly on the left wing and about a quarter inch from the end on this wing it uh, hit a bump or something inside the channel for the um, wing spar. So I sanded down just the very top part of the spar so that it fit without any problem. applied glue to one side of the spar, all four sides, and slid it into the wing, let it set up for a while, then applied glue to the other spar, slid it together, put some glue in the uh, center root of the wings and glued them together. After they had been drying for about two hours, I then glued in the little discs that serve as the plates for the uh, bolts that bolted to the fuselage. And that is all I've done on the assembly of the wing in advance of today. So the wing is basically assembled. There's very little left to do. I have to cut channels to free the ailerons. The center one is already cut, but the outer one for both uh, sides has to be cut to free it up. This way it's solid while it was traveling and is less likely to be damaged in the uh, shipping process. I have added the control horns for the ailerons on both sides. And other than that, the only other thing I do is plug it in so that the servo control arms for the ailerons rotate down, and then I can add the control rods. And of course, put on the propellers to the twin motors. So that's what I've done in advance because time is precious in the holiday season. And now let's go on to uh, continue the assembly today. The next step in the assembly is securing the wing to the fuselage. All the wires from the top of the wing have to fit into these two channels and as you can see there are quite a bit of them. Once the wing is in place it is secured to the fuselage with two bolts through these holes but we're only going to secure the back one initially. There's a groove here for the uh, tongue on the front of the wing and that will hold the front end initially. So that's what I'll do, and I'll be back with you in just a moment. I carefully fit the wires into the fuselage. One of the wires on each side is a bit short. That was the only challenge. I've now secured the back of the wing with one bolt. Before I secure the front, I'm going to be installing the bombs, which come on their own little platform. Now, they are not glued in place at this time, so you can either glue them in place or you can secure them with Velcro. The important thing to do is line up the screw hole with the hole down here and I have a little excess glue that I have to first remove from when I secured the plate in place. There's a circular uh, piece here that fits right into the mounting pl above the mounting plate. So search around, lines it up, it also lines up our screw hole makes the assembly very easy to do. The mounting bolts came in this bag and were identified by size, which matched up with their description in the instruction manual, which is really an instruction book. 
it's not that complicated. It's that it's in multiple languages, at least five. The all of the parts are small parts are individually bagged, and uh, those that need labels are labeled, such as Y line or rudder um, clevises, etc. So it's it's all named, and even the exhaust pipes for the motors are pre-bagged. They did supply glue. I used up most of it in securing my wing spar into place and uh, gluing the uh, wing halves together. I have. CA to use if I need to to make a quick secure um, adhesive lock and they supply some velcro like material to use to secure the battery. You have to obtain your own battery. This is the plug and fly version. It does not come with a receiver. I'm going to be using an orange RX 6 channel receiver that was supplied for this review by Hobby King but it has to be purchased separately and Hobby King supplied the recommended Turnigy 2.2 um, battery. It's marked 25 to 50 C discharge. Uh, let's go with the 25 C. That should be completely adequate for our needs with this uh, plane. One point, the bombs will not actually drop, so therefore you can decide if you ever want to fly without them. You can use a little Velcro in the hole and on here to secure them in place or you can just simply glue them in place and not have to give them any further consideration. Right now I'm going to go on and install the receiver because I want to be able to activate my landing gear to have the plane stand up on that and I also want to make sure that I have my ailerons uh, servo arms come down and then my elevator, excuse me, my rudder arms come down so that I can properly connect up the uh, rudders. I'm going to need a 7 channel receiver or an additional Y harness. Channel 1 is the ailerons. Channel 2 is the elevator. Channel 3 is the throttle. Number 4 is the rudder. Number 5 is the landing gear. And then there's an unmarked one that's LED, which will take up the 6th slot. But then there's also a UBEC, which would require another slot. So for today's purposes, since I don't have another Y harness with me, I'm just going to connect up the um, UBEC, the battery eliminating circuitry, to power up the receiver, bind it to my JR transmitter, and then make sure everything is working properly. I'm going to be doing this so that in case the landing gear deploys, it won't adversely af affect anything. So I'll be resting it on a chair with the landing gear free to move while I do all this. Well, the receiver is connected to everything. Um, I have to install the control arms to both the ailerons and the rudder and then secure the uh, tail place, tailpiece in place and secure the elevator control rods to the elevator. Uh, as you can see this channel gets pretty full of wires. Let's hope that our canopy with pilot and rear gunner fit. It's held on by magnet and it's a good fit so we are good to go there. Covering up a couple more points, the uh, prop is secured in place with a nut. The spinner fits over it. Like that. And then a screw supplied secures the spinner in place. So we will uh, finish up with the tail, add on the control arms, and be back with you. I've glued the tail on. The two wires plugged into two wires that are on a, y, a long Y harness. There, there's a servo that controls the tail wheel and the elevator servos are up further. The rudder servos are two out in the stride. So there's three servos down here for rudder tail and one servo with two connectors further up for the elevator. The space for the wiring on the top side was very small and it took some effort pushing backwards and well, pulling the line forward as far as possible and then pushing the connectors back in to get them to fit. Then I glued the tail on and I held it in place to avoid any resistance of it being pushed out. Didn't take but a, a couple minutes using CA but uh, it's a nice solid connection now. All of my connections are in line. The rudders are matching, the elevators are matching, so we're good to go there. I was very impressed by the landing gear on this plane. There's one gear on each side operating. You know, it's an electronic um, landing gear. There are no servos for the doors. They are held closed by springs 
and they're pushed open by bars on the front of the landing gear. As the landing gear comes forward, the bar slides down these pads and pushes the doors open, holding them open while they are down, and then as it retracts, the springs close the landing gear doors. So I thought that was a rather ingenious design. Works very well, very simple. The uh, wires for the uh, motors and uh, electronic speed controllers go from here into the uh, fuselage. The mount for the bombs is held on by one screw and then fitting to form on the fuselage. They suggest you can use Velcro if you want to have the bombs removable. I went ahead and decided to glue them there. If I want to remove them, I'll remove the whole pad. But this way they won't accidentally fall off in a strong cross breeze or something like that. Very simple assembly. Very easy to do. The uh, propellers are um, counter-rotating. So all you had to do is see which way the motor went and then put the right prop on. It is secured first with a bolt, then the plastic spinner fits over, and then a screw through the center secures the spinner in place. There are a lot of wires for a rather small space in the fuselage. It is my plan generally to keep the plane assembled so I don't have to pull the, all the wing wires out and push them back in and reconnect everything to assemble. Although I can leave the Y connectors in the receiver if I do have to take it apart because the individual wires are marked and numbered so that I can reconnect them. The only thing I have left to do is to uh, glue some Velcro-like material underneath the battery and put the matching piece on there to hold the battery in place and I'll be ready to fly. And I thought it would be appropriate to conclude the assembly video by demonstrating the landing gear a couple times and the doors from the front going up, coming down, as viewed from the side, going up, and coming back down. Very simple plan as I showed you, but it works very well. I'm very impressed with the uh, ease of assembly. I did have to cut the uh, ailerons loose as I discussed, so they're now independent. The control rods on the ailerons have been connected and we're ready to go to the flying field. Although it's late in the day, we won't be doing it today.